Hi, Peter Wood here from Greenwood Days, I'm back in the garden and another of my short films. We've gone through in the previous films looking at how to split and cleave and axe and draw knife the billet and we've put it onto the lathe and so now we need some tools to turn on the lathe. So it's a quick film just to show you the four different chisels that you can use on the lathe. I've got a few other examples down here so I can show you the relative merits of one against the other but just want to show you the four tools and we'll go from there. So I'm going to do a close up um, so you won't see me or much of me and you'll just see the tools and see how we go from there. If you use other tools and you prefer different ones do comment below, uh, message me, whatever and tell me what sort of things you're using and we can compare and it's really good to have a discussion and find out why one tool is better for you than another one. If, it's, if there's a new tool to me I'll try it out and give it a go and as I say I'll learn something and that's great as well. I'm going to tell you about the four tools that I use on the pole lathe and then honestly tomorrow we'll get on to doing some turning and start roughing out the wood but you do want to know what tools to use. I've got four tools it's all you're going to need on the pole lathe. Um, note, they're in a box. It has a number of uses the box. I can carry them all around, but obviously the main thing is it protects the blade. It protects the blade from being dropped on the ground, from hitting other bits of metal and chipping it and going blunt, which obviously you don't want to happen. Um, but also it protects my hands. And if I'm doing a demonstration in a public place, I can any tool that I'm not using goes back in the box and there's no problems with people cutting themselves on unguarded blades which is what you've got to watch out for. Um, it's nice to have a table at a reasonable height but don't worry you don't you don't need a table um, you just pop the box on the floor rest it against the lathe tie it against the lathe uh, but I like to have a table because I can then put some sharpening stones on there so they're just a hand and if something's beginning to feel a little bit dull I can quickly sharpen up got a nice bit of steam bending at the bottom there but it creates a nice shelf so I can put a few more water stones and can rack up the things that I'm turning and that's all you need. Um, four chisels. Let's go through the chisels. I've got the main chisel that I use is a big gouge. Um, this one I've no idea who made this one it came again second hand picked up relatively cheaply um, but it's got a nice curve. Um, I find certainly when you're first starting but most of the time um, a nice curve like this keeps the corners away from when you're roughing out and when you're working and stops you digging in quite so much um, this one's got a reasonable length handle so you've got a bit of leverage um, means you can control it a bit more delicately um, and it sharpens relatively easily holds an edge nicely and you can get a really nice sharp edge so that's that's the big gouge. Just to give you a comparison, um, here's another gouge. This one's uh, a modern one from Ashley Isles. It's a nice um, bit of steel in there. Works nicely, but it's got a much flatter radius. And so I find, um, certainly when you're beginning, you tend to hit the corners. It digs in a bit more. So given the choice, they have other sweeps, other curves, other radiuses. I'd go for one with a bit of a tighter curve um, but they are nice actually I'll, it's a good make um, another one um, that I picked up just a uh, cabinet makers um, steel again you can see just a bit of a tighter curve you could knock the handle off but why bother it's, it's got nice it's got a nice patina and that works nicely and then one of my other favorites this is a carving chisel this one I know um, was made handmade by Bristol design uh, many years ago it's a C curve carving chisel and I've just turned and put a nice long handle on there again you can see quite a similar curve to this one works really nicely and that extra length um, really helps with your control and stops it knocking up um, another good one let's get that back in the box the other main chisel and they're the first two, two that we're going to be using uh, in the next film a, a wide flat chisel Again, this one is a nice one from Ashley Isles. Um, it's one of their green woodworking range of tools. I think it's 50 mil wide. It's basically a firmer chisel, but it's got the corners ground off so you can get in a little bit better. Um, I do like a nice bevel edge chisel, um, which gets rid of these sides, but it's a, it's a good starter. It's reasonable length. So you've got a bit of leverage, works nicely. 
don't worry if you haven't got that. That's just a standard um, 50 mil carpenter's bevel edge chisel. That does nicely. If I ever got round to it, I might knock the handle off, make it a little bit longer, but I've never felt the need at the moment. Um, works nicely, you get a nice edge. And the wider, personally, the better. Um, the bodger's working out in the woods, two inch, three inch wide chisels. You get a really nice wide planing cut, makes it quite uh, makes it work quite quickly and gives you quite an efficient cut. Um, let's put that back in there. Just see if there's any other ones in there. No other ones of the flat variety. So that's the flat chisel and the big gouge. If I'm wanting to detail um, smaller curves, rough out smaller bits, then I've got a fingernail gouge. Um, you can get them in. Well, let's see if I've got another one here. Yeah, different sizes. Um, if you're doing a lot of delicate work, go for a smaller one. If there's no delicacy, then a bigger one just, just knocks it away that bit quicker. But I tend to use that in conjunction with the skew chisel. So I'll rough out with the spindle gouge and then finish off with the skew chisel. And put that back. And then finally, um, a skew chisel. Um, nice sharp blade, Ashley Isles again. You can get them really wide, you can get them narrow, depending on what you're working. Try out lots of different ones. I like this one, it's got slightly rounded sides, um, but for quite a while I used that one. Um, it's seen a lot of use, you can see. Um, certainly been through a few hands, um, but both work nicely. And you want it ground to a nice, fine, um, shallow bevel. In fact, all these chisels are ground to a much shallower bevel than you would expect on a powered lathe. Um, obviously we're just going to be turning through green wood and so it ha it's, so it's softer, it, you, can, you can lower the angle a little bit without the, without the edge degrading too much, gives you a cleaner cut and I'll be grinding it to about 25 degrees, something like that. This might be 15 degrees on either side, so probably included angle is about 30 degrees but have an experiment. Lower the angle a bit, see if it works nicely. If it starts crumbling a little bit at the top, just raise the angle up a little bit. And that, just a quick one now, that's, that's, that's the four chisels that we use. That's all you need. We can, I, to be honest, that, that's all I've been using for many, many years. Um, don't worry about buying any more. The whole lot, you can get new probably for about a hundred pounds and if you route around the second hand shops and do a little bit of restoration on your tools you can get the whole lot for a fiver um, and there we have all the tools and i'll see you next time and we'll get actually started on the lathe so keep well